Let's be the name of the Lord. We greet the youth, the brethren, the entire Brazil and outside of Brazil with the peace of the Lord Jesus. This class will be a class about the knowledge of the time called soon. We're going to give a quick explanation for the new ones, an introduction. In the book of Revelations, the Lord from in many occasions speaks with John about the time called soon. I'm coming soon. I'm coming quickly. The things that are uh, soon to take place, the things that are soon to take place, I'm coming quickly. Surely I'm coming soon. Come Lord Jesus. And we need to understand that those verses, they were in not in the human time, but in a prophetic time. The Bible speaks of two times. The Chronos, which is the time of man, the time that make us old, the time that never comes back. And also speaks of the Kairos, which is the time of God, where everything is, where everything exists, everything is eternal. When the Lord speaks for many times about the time, soon I'm coming near, it's not something that was going to happen after tomorrow. It was a, a prophetic time in which the church was going to proclaim to the world Jesus is coming soon. It was a prophetic time in which all of the prophecies about the glorious coming of the Lord Jesus were going to take place. And we're going to, to, in, to introduce to the youth five questions about the knowledge of the time called soon. So the youth, they need to be aware of the unique moment in which the church is living. The church is living a glorious moment. We are blessed because we are living this moment. We are testifying about the last days of the church because soon the Lord Jesus will come back. So, the Lord wants a, a group of youth that are aware of, of the Bible. So, the youth, the, here's a question. The youth should be afraid of the coming of the Lord Jesus? So, that's the first question. Does the youth have to be afraid or desiring to overcome this moment? So when you find a youth that is afraid of the arrival of the Lord Jesus, it's a sign that they are not ready. It's a characteristic that they are not prepared. Because the one who is prepared not only believes that Jesus will come back, they also loves the coming of the Lord Jesus. They desire the arrival of the Lord Jesus. They want, they call for it, they plea for it. That's why the word Maranatha in the original, in the Aramaic, is a, is a shout, is a cry, is a proclamation. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. In the Greek, in the Greek it has the same meaning but has a meaning a little different. In the Greek, it is a plea. It's a supplication, it's a request. It's Maranatha. Come soon, Lord. Come soon, Lord. So, the ones that are ready, they are not afraid. Much on the contrary, they love the arrival of Jesus, they desire the coming of the Lord Jesus. Now I'm going to ask you another question. So that you may be aware of this time called soon. The youth may even answer, the church 
is getting ready. Is the church preparing for the arrival of Jesus? Yes or no? The church is already prepared. If Jesus comes this afternoon, there is a church that will be raptured. If Jesus comes this afternoon, there is a group of youth that is going to be raptured. The church is already prepared with the spiritual gifts, with the word of life, with the revealed word. The church is already dressed up in holiness. This is the prophecy of Joel. Come the, the groom from their chambers. Jesus is my beloved one, and soon he will live from the celestial chambers with thousands of his angels. And the prophecy continues in Joel. And may the bride get out of her room, the room where she's getting ready. But when the bride is ready, she leaves that room and she shows herself up. She reveals herself, and everyone will see her. It's a time for the bride to get out of that room. The bride of the Lamb is ready. It's coming out and telling the world, saying, Soon, Jesus will come back. When somebody looks at a bride, the bride doesn't have to say anything. Everybody knows that she's going to get married because of her garments. In the Middle East, a bride, when somebody saw her from afar, they would say she would get married without her having to say any word, just because of her uh, clothing. When the world sees the youth by the way they dress up, by the way they walk, by their testimony, many will say they are going to a marriage, they are going to meet their beloved groom. So now I'm going to ask the third question about the knowledge of the time called soon. These millions of Christians there are just labeled Christians that never went through the narrow door and that are not walking through the narrow path. How are they going to be in the time called soon? Those millions of Christians that are just labeled Christians, they avoid the narrow path and don't want to go through it. How are going to uh, how are going to uh, how they are going to fare in the great day of the Lord? In great trouble. But those that are walking in the narrow path, the narrow path. It's it is narrow, but it's filled with blessings. The narrow the the path is narrow, but in the narrow path there are miracles that happen. The narrow path is difficult, but in the narrow path, there is a living God walking beside us. When the Lord Jesus was in the cross of Calvary, offering they offered to Him um, was they offered Him wine mixed with vinegar. Vinegar was uh, anesthetic. It, Called, was helped with anesthesia and was given for people so they would not feel the pain of the cross. It was, an, it was an anesthesia to help people not to feel the pain of crucifixion but see here the cunning of the enemy. The, wine, the honey mixed with wine would so then they mixed honey, mixed with the wine, and the wine speaks of the blessing of the Spirit. This is the gospel that they're offering to many, to lots of youth today. They offer wine with vinegar, so the, the blessing without having to suffer the pains of cross, uh, blessing, salvation, grace, without having to die to the world, without having to suffering the cross of the pains of crucifixion you my youth you need you don't need to die to the world you can remain your flesh you need to receive the blessing of the spirit and Jesus didn't accept it and many youth they are here gathered they are not accepting this gospel 
because those are, are not going to die with Christ, they are not going to resurrect with Christ, and they are not going to reign with Christ. Jesus rejected. He preferred to suffer the, cr the pains of the cross. Don't accept this gospel that is appearing during the time called soon. But because those are going to suffer the pains of the cross, they're going to be crucified to themselves, to the world. If we die with him, with him we will reign. If we are crucified with Christ, we will live with him. Those thousands and thousands of Christians are just labeled Christians that put the name of uh, Jesus in the t-shirt, but they are not walking the narrow path. They are going to stay here in great affliction. But those that are living this time of called soon, aware that the sanctification is necessary, that pains of crisis, the, the cross are necessary, they will rejoice in the wedding with the Lamb. The name of a denomination will not save anybody. But having your name written in the Book of Life will save you. Jacob, before we go to the next question, Jacob, when he was blessed in Bethel, when he was blessed in Bethel, he changed the name of the place. This place was called the Seed of Light. This place had a new name, now called Bethel. When Jacob was on the valley of Jabbok and the angel showed up and he fought with the angel and he was blessed once again. He had the same he took the same decision, he changed the name of the location, it's not going to be called Jabot anymore, it's going to be called Peniel. Jacob, Jacob liked to name the places where he received the blessing. But that day, God to, spoke to him and said, Today, you are the one who is going to change your name. You are no longer be called Jacob, but you are going to be called Israel. Well, live in a period in which Christians, when they are blessed, they want to change church, they want to change the name of their denomination, they want to change their pastor, but they don't change their lives. And today, the word of the Lord is, today, who is going to change is you, Jacob. You don't need to go to a larger church, a church filled with instrumentalists, a church with a large praise group. You don't need to go to a church where the pastor is famous. You need to change your life, Jacob. And today, I'm changing you, Jacob. You don't need to change your church or denomination or pastor. No. Today, you are the one who is going to change. Today, you change your name. You stop being an inconstant youth. You're going to be a servant and study in the presence of the Lord. You're going to be changed. Your name is no longer be a, a fleshly Christian, but you're going to be a spiritual Christian. So now, uh, another question. Our time is coming to the end in every sense of it. Will there be another harvest after the rapture? Will there be another opportunity? For the Gentiles, no. The day of the great meeting is arriving. The church and the world is symbolized by the, br the bride and the wedding, the, the, the parable of the ten virgins. When the door closed, nobody else entered. The world is getting ready for the great trial, tribulation. And the last question is, is there an, an escape? Yes, there is. The church will escape the great tribulation. Is a prophecy of Isaiah 57:1. Before the evil comes, the just is raptured. Before evil comes, the just is raptured. This is as an action of the of the Lord in the, the whole Bible. See the deluge. 
before Noah and his families were taken away. See, Sodom and Gomorrah, but before Lot and his families were taken away. There will be tribulation, but first the family of God will be taken away. Paul wrote this, God. He didn't, didn't destine us for the time of the wrath. The great tribulation will be a period of judgment. And Paul wrote in Thessalonians, God didn't destine us for the time of the wrath. But, and he continues, God destined us for salvation Christ Jesus. There will be no more opportunities. The net is being thrown for the last time for the Gentiles. The great trial. Israel will be saved. It is a biblical text here. Israel will be saved. And then after, <coughs> after, Jesus will come back with his church in glory. And he will establish uh, a thousand years. And there is a song that speaks of this meeting of the church coming down as we close this class. And Israel meeting with the church is a song that Pastor Amado always speaks. Who is this that comes? Let me show the youth. Is it possible to show the lyrics, lyrics of the song? This song is inspired in the song of Solomon. This expression, as the pastor always teaches us, is Israel speaking. The church is come with Jesus in glory. So Israel asks, who is this that comes like the star of the morning, beautiful like the sun and shining like the moon? It is the church coming down with the, the Lamb. Now the next verse. So then the church answered to Israel, I came to the garden of so the church is saying, I'm coming down, I'm the bride of the Lamb. So the next verse is a shout of Israel, come back, come back, Sulamit. In the great trial, in the affliction, Israel pleads for the coming back of the church. So the dance of Manai is the dance of two armies, the church and Israel saved. They will glorify the Lord. The song, please go back in the original. The man sing of the part of Israel. Who is this that show up? And then the next part, the women sing. They sing the church. And then all together, let's sing. Let's stand up. The men are going to sing the first part. And then the women are going to represent the church singing. Came down to the garden of the trees. So now, first. The man, the man. The church. Now the church answering the women. Everyone together.
the youth, now Israel, the men, and the women praising the name of the Lord. Now the women answering, and the man praising the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. to Jesus. When we speak of a vision the Lord has given. During this first class, it was shown that the, the hair of, a, of the youth was so tangled that it looks like a nest, a bird nest. And I noticed that a few birds began to came close and they, they wanted to make their nest there. It was going to bring infirmity and many negative consequences to the life of the youth. And the youth didn't realize it like if they were not looking on the mirror or if they were not combing their hair. And the birds that came in, in a, in a subtle way and to make a nest in the hair of the youth. The birds came to attempt to make a nest. And I noticed that this morning everything was undone. There was a wild oil that was placed in the hair and then the birds passed by. They didn't see this opportunity to make the nest and the the brethren were uh, delivered from this harm. It's the Lord speaking, right? We're living times, days of confusion, where the confusions there are out there. We we see our friends in the school, college. They don't know where they're going, but we have a resource, which is the Lord Jesus, the youth. You who are youth and adolescent. You have to remember, you're going to go through trials. But you can come to the church, you can speak with your pastor, you can ask for prayer, 
you can go to God's feet and you serve a God that will undo every confusion and will place you on the direction of the things of eternity. So the question that we're asked here is to trust the Lord. It's remain persisting and remaining in the presence of this God because the youth doesn't like to do this, but we are close to the rapture. This generation, we believe because of the world, this generation is the generation that will be raptured. Amen? Let us stand up. Just complete. You hear? Speaks of the thought, the life of the youth. Uh, uh, tangled. Of field of mistakes. Why, what is the gift showing? It's showing that we are subject to mistakes, sin. There's no way for us to run out away from it. The danger is to to let the bird come and make a nest. What does it mean? The danger is to get used to the mistake. The bird coming and doing, making a nest is because you're already completely involved in the sin and the mistake. And this is what God is alerting you this morning. Nobody uh, can't run away from sin, but getting used to the practice of sin, this is something that is very dangerous because there's no way back. The youth that is used to and, and is not feeling the pain of sin, that is not feeling uncomfortable with sin, is a sign that his salvation is at risk. Understand? That you are not prepared for the arrival of Jesus. So the Lord this morning is alerting you that the Lord has already given this blessing. The Lord has given this deliverance from this point forward to ask the Lord so that you may run away from evil. You have to run away from the appearance of evil. Let's stand up. Lord, I want to thank you for this seminar, for this morning in which we were able to pray and learn from you, Lord. We praise your holy name. Continue blessing us, our lives, in this morning. And we place to you our consecration, our fasting, uh, in favor of the evangelization. Operate in the midst of your people. Operate, Lord, in the life of your church. Here, especially in our region. Give your blessing. We ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. We'll come back at 10. Now we're going to serve out outside a breakfast. If we come back soon, we get up, get up early. Peace of the Lord.